Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about some of the best and iconic courthouse dramas that you can binge watch and I will guarantee you that they will become your comfort watch just like it happened to me. Without further ado, let's dive in. First one is Suits. Back in 2011 when Suits first premiered on television, it restarted the legal drama craze and put a new spin to it. The show brought to life charming, charismatic lawyers and legal officers and paved the way for other legal dramas that came after it. Suits remained to be one of the highest rated shows until its close in 2019. It is a classy and sophisticated take on legal world with characters that are greatly built and explored. It is a great watch for the fan of dramedy's genre. It has a total number of 9 seasons with 134 episodes, each episode lasting for 45 plus minutes. Many streaming platforms have acquired the rights to the show and is currently available on Netflix, Peacock, Amazon Prime and other streaming platforms as well. Suits is that kind of show that will compel the audience to get involved in its story and characters. The first episode begins with the introduction of Michael Ross or Mike who dropped out of college and makes a living by illegally taking the law school admission test as a substitute for the original candidates. To pay for his grandmother's medical expense, he agrees to deliver a batch of marijuana for his best friend. However, he nearly gets caught in the sting operation. Trying to flee from the police, he stumbles into an interview for an associate in a law firm, conducted by Harvey Specter, known to be the best closer in the city. Harvey is amazed by Mike's idiotic memory and his understanding of law. He hires Mike as an associate of Pearson Hardman Law Firm. Even though he does not have a law degree, nor did he ever attend the law, the two form a bond and agree to protect Mike's secret. Mike starts working for the firm and meets Jessica Pearson, a managing partner for Pearson Hartman. Lewis Litt, a corporate attorney in the firm, Donna Paul, Harvey's secretary and close confidant, and Rachel Zane, a senior paralegal and his eventual romantic interest. Gradually, Mike's secret gets revealed to the members of the firm. Different people react to it differently. Many people use this to forward their agenda and attain what they cannot get legally. Mike's secret brings about a lot of changes in the world of suits. Harvey and Mike's relationship is one of the best among them, one of the best romances in television history. Their relationship is based on mutual respect, as Mike has immense admiration for Harvey as his mentor and more so as a lawyer. Harvey admires Mike for his special skills. Their relationship is dynamic. It is also filled with friendly humor and banter. Similarly, Donna and Harvey's relationship goes way beyond that typical boss secretary. Donna is not portrayed to be a stupid character. She is clever, a problem solver, and she often takes a big part in Harvey's cases. The show goes on for 9 seasons revolving around these relationships. Story-wise, there are not many dramatic changes that take place in Swords. This is the reason why after a few seasons, rating and viewership declined. There is a slight lack of tightness in the plot after the first couple of seasons. Nevertheless, the show redeems itself with a few new characters in the last seasons. The two most interesting characters in the show are Lewis Litt and Jessica Pearson. Jessica's character is so badass that she starred in a spin-off called Pearson which delved into her past and her career in politics as the aide of the mayor of Chicago. You're not calling the shots. I am. And whether you think my call is wrong or not, it is still my name on that goddamn wall. Yeah. Louis is another massively interesting character. He is corporate attorney at the firm and loves the firm with all his heart. But he does not hesitate to go against all of them if it gets him what he wants. And all he wants is to be cherished and appreciated. This makes him one of the diciest characters in the show. The audience never knows which side he is going to be on. Another plus point of the show is that it develops its characters very thoroughly. No character is in the same position as they were in the beginning of the show. For example, Rachel, who was a senior paralegal, became an attorney herself. She overcame her self confidence issues and passed the bar exam, just like Mike, and they run their own firm in Seattle later. Suits is fast-paced, clever, and bound to capture your attention. It is a must-watch for fans of dramedies. Even during the lowest points of the show, it has the quality that few others have. How to get away with murder. A brilliant but slightly crooked law professor and a criminal attorney. Five fresh-faced law students. The professor believes law cannot be learned from the theories in the books. There is a need to get involved in real-life cases. Her students are desperate to gain her approval. What could go wrong? A novel take on legal dramas with a generous touch of mystery and thriller, How to Get Away with Murder is a brilliant series that will be a great addition to any watch list. The show was first aired in 2014. It has a total number of six seasons and 90 episodes. The show is now available to watch on Netflix. 
How to get away with murder is a drama that will always keep you on your toes with its story and characters. Annalise Keating is an attorney specializing in criminal law. She is also a prestigious professor at Middleton Law School. Every year she chooses five students from her class who she believes to be more gifted than the others. These five students called the Keating Five help her in her court cases. But what Wesky Benz, Connor Walsh, Michaela Pratt, Asher Millstone and Noel Castillo don't know about their professor is that her court cases sometimes overlap with her personal life and her personal life is not very simple. As the students follow their unconventional and charismatic professor into the world of criminal law, they get irrevocably drawn into a web of murder cases and cover-ups, each related to the other. To solve these cases, they are often forced to give up their values, their relationships and sometimes their lives. The best thing about How to Get Away with Murder is its moral standing. It is a show that is always towing the line between complete black and complete white. Although the story is fictional and not completely accurate to real life, it sure is amusing. It offers a rather ironic view into Annalise Keating's world of law. To succeed there, you have to be unscrupulous, even illegal. There is only one goal, to win the cases. Ethics and legal proceedings are just means to an end. However, the story is a major plus point of the show. It is gripping and never changes in its six season run, though the strength of the grip changes slightly in the later seasons. In fact, the show doesn't hesitate in even killing off some of its beloved main characters in order to not compromise on the story. The story of how to get away with murder is mind-boggling. There is mysteries at every turn, and just when the audience think they have figured it out, the writers come up with a solution of their own which is completely different and downright shocking. How to get away with murder is a great combination of story arts that are out of the ordinary and extremely shocking. That is what makes the show a critical and popular hit. However, like all great shows, How to Get Away with Murder falters slightly in its story and characters from the third season. The story is not as writer tired as it was in the first couple of seasons, and the suspense lacks in some places. It still remains a very good show, but the later seasons do not compare to the first two. The protagonist of the show, Annalise Keating, is as grey as they come. It is her character that makes the show much more interesting. From the brilliant criminal attorney who could not be touched in the early seasons to the dishonest, alcoholic woman whose past has caught up with her in the later ones, Viola Davis' portrayal is riveting. You know what? This is your mess and I'm gonna let you handle it. No, no, just answer the question. Why me? You know what? I'm trying to change the damn world here. Literally. I'm Martin Luther damn King trying to blow up the entire justice system. Her depiction of Annalise Keating was such a hit with both critics and audience that she won an Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series, making her the first black woman to win the award in the category. However, it is not only Annalise that contributes to the greatness of the show. Each and every character of Keating 5 has story and secrets. Alfred Enoch as Wes Gibbons, Jacques Fellahi as Connor Walsh, Aja Naomi King as Michaela Pratt, Matt McGurry as Asher Millstone and Carla Souza as Laurel Castillo all bring a distinct personality to their characters. They are all connected to each other and depend on one another, but their relationships change very often. Usually legal dramas tend to be off the reach of the watchers due to the jargons used throughout. In short, boring, this is the edge of the Lincoln lawyers among others. It is easy to digest, relatable and interesting, that it would make you think whoever is behind something. While it uses legal terms, the show explains it and even if it fails heavily on the typical courtroom scene, the show does not bore. Not at all. It will keep you on your screen until the very end. The Lincoln Lawyer series on Netflix focuses on the second book of the series of the same name of Michael Connelly, The Brass Verdict, where Mickey Holler inherits the whole law practice of one Jerry Vincent, a lawyer who has been murdered. Holler is fresh from hiatus from an accident which led to his addiction and rehab. This becomes his shot to be back on the pedestal. The narrative of the whole series is good. It keeps the viewer interested in the story, wanting for more. It is well written that it will definitely make you think of the hows and the whys. The editing of the series is quite typical but it works. The choice of music is effective too. The setting of the show is quite grand but given the story it will pass. The casting on the show is so on point, Manuel Grassi Rolfo delivered the role. Neff Campbell's look great as a lawyer, Becky Newton is fashionable, Angus Simpson is just perfect for the role. Christopher Gorham will annoy you as much because he is effective and oh the pug is so cute. 
Looking at it from the legal perspective, sorry to disappoint everyone but the court cases are nothing like what shows portrait. It is a whole lot different in real life. But this is what good about the Lincoln lawyer. It made courtroom scenes interesting as if there is that much action in it. Also, it explains the legal jargons used in the series which are absent in other shows. If you have a legal background, it is a good watch and it will definitely make you want cases you handle to be interesting and hope that someday you will be as good a lawyer as Mickey Holler. Because truth be told, he's a force to be reckoned with in court. Also, the portrayal of him staying in the office because of tons of work happens in real life. To be clear, not everyone in justice system is corrupt. The show gets to portray different kinds of justice. One that is served in court by the jury when Elliot won the case. One almost fell into miscarriage of justice, if not for a higher power in Maggie's case against Soto. Street justice when Du Bois shot Elliot. The justice that Menendez got before and after his new trial. And clear failure in the case of Jerry Vincent. It is in the oath of lawyer to stand for the cause of his or her clients no matter how guilty he or she is because it is a well enriched legal doctrine that every person is innocent until proven guilty. The law itself has a benefit of doubt and that everyone deserves a defense, a chance to fight. But of all the themes of the show, I mean all about how the Lincoln lawyer got one thing on point, that law is a jealous mistress. It was perfectly portrayed in the relationship of Mickey with his exes and Maggie and her family life. See, the reason why they don't work is the law is a demanding profession and it needs a lot of attention. On Mickey, there are days when he stays in the office overnight. This happens for real, especially when big cases are about to brought on court. For Maggie, she even brings home work, something that isn't ideal but cannot be avoided. In the end, the show leaves room for season 2 while completely wrapped up the first one. There are still some questions that need some answers but there are already those which are concluded. Whether it will have another run remains only in Netflix, either way the show is good on its own. Overall, The Lincoln Lawyer is a fun watch. It makes legal world more interesting and colorful. The show is masterful work, which delivered well on its almost every aspect. While there is still room for improvement, the series is enough to topple down those at the top of the charts in just a week. If it gets another season, there is enough material for it. The Lincoln Lawyer is now streaming on Netflix.